All my words fall short. I got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude? I could sing these songs as I often do. But every song must end, and you never do. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. 'Cause all that I have is a hallelujah.
Jesus is Lord. 
That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There's always redemption, which means there's always a brighter day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church out there. We're just doing our best to become our best. At our church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts, and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not really our church at all. It's His. And we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So here's the invitation. You're invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. family. How are all of you? Good, 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 good. All right, family. Um, what an interesting morning we had this morning. <laughs> for, those of who, for those of you who were here, um, we didn't have any power um, in the house. But uh, luckily we got it sorted out and we, we get to serve Jesus. Amen. He always comes through. Amen. He always comes through. Um, no matter how much dire you think the situation might be, he he's always there. But um, anyway, family, um, I'm going to keep the, the introductions nice and short um, because uh, we have a very, very special friend with us today. And uh, I don't want to say friend, I want to say family member. Amen. Um, Alvain is here with us and uh, Alvain, we... Um, we are like ve- really, really expectant for, for what God is going to do through your, through your life and through your words today. Um, and the family, I, I, I just pray right now that, that as you sit in your chair, be expectant to hear something from the Lord specific for you today. Even if it's just a word. Family, it, God said we need to have faith as small as a mustard seed. So it can just be a word. And if you need something today, family, I know that God is going to come through for you. Because that is why we are here. Our focus is Jesus Christ. Nothing else, nothing matters except Jesus. And whatever we do on stage, whatever is happening on stage, behind the scenes, that's for the glorification of who God is. Amen. And um, I just want to quickly see by hands... Who were at the baptism yesterday? Who were at the baptism? Who was baptized yesterday? I just want, if, if everyone who was baptized yesterday, I don't want to, um, I don't know why that's in English, but if you guys can just stand up, um, just, just a quick stand up. Um, they had the privilege and they made a proclamation yesterday, family. And can we just give them a huge, huge hand? And and God is going to to bless you in this journey. I want to say to to each one of you, you can sit and that's fine. Um, God is going to bless you in this journey because of that faith, because of that obedience you had in your heart. Um, And it's just incredible. incredible. And everyone who shared it with them, um, I think it was uh, such an amazing time, which I missed, unfortunately. Um, 
but we're going to have more baptisms, amen. Um, Chad, can we maybe get me down a little bit? Because uh, it feels like I'm speaking from that side. Just a little bit more. Cool, thanks. Testing, testing. I think I'm coming through here. Cool. All right. Anyway, family. Um, and then, just by show of hands, whose first time is it with us? Whose first time? I know I see a few faces. Awesome. Family, you are so welcome. We are so glad that you guys are with us today. And I, uh, I believe that God is going to show you something of Christianity today. Um, and uh, I, I can't promise you that it's going to be comfortable um, because the Word is not always comfortable. The Word is like a two-edged sword. Um, but I know that it's going to do surgery in your hearts today. And one way we do surgery, families, is through Holy Communion. And we're going to go into the time of Holy Communion. So if the ushers can just maybe assist, is there anyone who do not have the Holy Communion cups? Okay, if the ushers can just assist them with the Holy Communion cups. And then we're going to go into the Holy Communion. And um, this is one of the most special moments we get to have in remembrance of what Jesus did for us on the cross. This is not just a normal religious act that we do, family. This is and should never be just a mere formality that we do in church. This is about remembering that there was a God who sent His only Son for us to die on a cross so that we, so that we didn't have to go and hang on a cross. And I, I, I don't know if you can take that into, into perception or into a context of, of your daily life. But imagine, imagine you were in a situation where you had to give your life for one of your family members sitting right next to you. Would you do it? That's the kind of love that we are remembering. That's the kind of, of act that we are remembering right now. And I want to I wanna read in, in 2 Corinthians, um, sorry, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 24. So if you want to follow in your Bibles, family, that would be awesome. It says, this is my body, for which is for you. Do this in affectionate remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in affectionate remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Family, when we take Holy Communion, we remember that by eating the bread, it represents the body of Jesus. It represents a body that was beaten but not broken. Not a single bone was broken in Jesus' body. He went through excruciating pain. 39 lashes, not a bone broken. Because He was the perfect sacrifice. Perfect love. And this means that he was, on, he was punished on behalf of you and me. Out of His love for us. And He took our judgment and our punishment family on Himself. So that we wouldn't have to do that. And when we think of Jesus being whipped and nailed to the cross and going to hell for three days and three nights, we need to remember that, that Jesus was essentially taking our place. That should rightfully be you and me hanging on that cross. But Jesus took our place. And He was paying the ransom for our lives by exchanging His for ours. As a family, with that in mind, I, I just want you to confess this after me. Lord Jesus Christ, as I take this bread, as I remember the great sacrifice you paid, by exchanging your life for mine, by being punished on my behalf so that I could be free. 
You may take the breath. Family, when Jesus held the cup, he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. And at that moment, Jesus was establishing the unbreakable contract or, or covenant with mankind. A contract, a covenant through his blood. A covenant that the world has never seen before and will never see in their life. A covenant that is so true and so caring and so full of promises because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Family, that's a covenant that cannot be broken. And He signed it, sealed every promise in the Bible through His blood for each and every single person sitting here today and every single person hearing this message today. And this means that, that every promise in the Bible, Scriptures, is yours. Signed, sealed, and guaranteed by the most precious blood of the Creator of all things, seen and unseen. And today's scripture family that we will lay hold of through the guarantee of His blood. This is, uh, this is your first promise, if you want, for today, that you can lay hold of. is Romans 8 verse 28. It says this, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Amen. Family, I can tell you today that if you love your God with everything in your life, He will work out His plans for you in ways that you can never imagine. Amen. So I want you to just declare this after me, family. Father, I thank you that according to Romans 8 verse 28, your promise is that you work for the good of those who love you thank you that you are our way maker and your good work will make a way in every situation we face amen you may take back the juice I mean, family. Now I have the the privilege of calling on. Uh, where's Robin? There's Robin. All right, family. I'm a, I'm gonna call on Robin, and uh, he's just gonna share his heart with us in terms of worship, why we do worship, why we do it the way we do it, and uh, let's give it up for him. Oh, wow, I didn't know I was going to get like a hand clap. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, man, come on, guys. See, we've been doing this. Say that like you've had coffee. Good morning, family. Good morning. <laughs> oh, that sounds a bit better. That's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it for now. Oh, what a beautiful time to come to worship Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, I know like five people think that's amazing. Family, is it amazing to worship Jesus? Yeah. It's great. It's so good. It's amazing to worship Jesus. I think the, the, the very, very special thing about worshiping Jesus that, that I've personally experienced is that worship is one of those things where you give everything and you still get blessed. Like that, that is amazing. Like there's no like doing it because we want something. It's, it's, a, it's a complete 100% give. And yet the Father decides, I will bless you still. I will I will. I will just give you and give you because we are his children and he loves us with everything that he has there is no condition to his love and uh so uh i'm gonna pull up some scriptures there oh it's already on yeah psalm 100 verse 4 it says enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful to him and bless his name for the lord is good is the lord good yeah. so good <laughs> psalm 47 verse 1 
Come everyone, everyone, okay? There is no distinction whether you are young, whether you are old. Come everyone, clap your hands and shout to God with a joyful praise. I think, I think we should do some of that this morning. I think so. I think it's time. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Yeah, let's give some praise to God. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. That's the one. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Where was that when I greeted you? Come on. <laughs> Psalm 134 verse 2. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. So it is okay. If anyone was wondering, it is okay to lift your hands. Oh, I love this one. My favorite one. Psalm 150 verse 1 to 6. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with the blast of the rammed horn. Praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. This verse is special because I'm pretty sure it gives us an exact rundown of everything that we can do. Like there is, I don't think there's something we can't do when it comes to praise to Jesus. And so this morning as we come, let us come with that fire. Let us come with that boldness before the King. And let us worship Him in spirit and in truth. Because that's, that's what He wants. That's what He wants. He wants those who are willing to just give everything, lay themselves before the feet of Jesus. And so, Father... As we come this morning, as your sons and daughters, Father, before you, as we just enter into your presence, Father, just to bask and just to soak in your presence, Father, come and gift us with something special this morning. Holy Spirit, come and be so very evidently present. Come and speak to us, Father, minister to us, Father. Bless us this morning, Father. In your name, amen. Lord, we bless you, we worship you, and we honor you. Father, with you all things are possible, and we give you the praise. We give you the praise. Hallelujah!
The time. 
your voice and sing. Every stronghold will crumble. I hear the chase in the ground. We surrender to you, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, and have your way among us. Pour out your spirit upon us. Father, we are open to you today. Let's make some noise for Jesus. Let's make some noise for Jesus. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you appreciate Jesus way more than that. Let's make some noise for Jesus. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. Wow. Beside me, in front of me, all around me. He's always there. He's always there. Never leaves us, nor forsakes us ever. Oh, Jesus, we love you. We love you, Jesus.
Spirit of the Inhabit our praises today. Overflow. Come and overflow.
where feet may fail And there I find you in the mystery In oceans deep My faith will stand My soul will rest in your embrace I am yours And you are mine Your grace abounds in deepest waters Your sovereign hand will be my guide Where feet may fail and fear surrounds me You've never failed and you won't start So I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace I am yours And you Spirit, lead me where my trust is without border. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence so my Savior, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger. In the presence of my Savior, I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise. My soul will rest in your embrace. Galatians 6 verse 9 says this. This is probably one of my most favorite verses in the Bible. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Family, when I listen to these songs of worship... 
And it says, call me upon the waters, family. I know that it tends to get rough. But the promise today is that if we keep on doing good and we do not grow weary, the Lord will come to your aid. And so, Father, we just, we just come in this morning. Lord, no matter how tired we might, might be, no matter how long the year might have been, no matter what we have faced, all the trials, all the tribulations in this year, Father, we come today with with this promise in our hearts, knowing that we just need to keep on doing the good work, keep on pushing into who you are, Father. Father, I pray that I pray that you will give each and every person sitting here today a seed of good work. A seed of good work, Father. And I pray that you will just call them out upon the waters. And I pray that they will, like Peter, fix their eyes on you and walk with you on this journey. Father, I pray that you will just pull in their heartstrings right now. Just pull on each and every person who is hungry for you, Father. Who is hungry for you, Father. I pray that you will just grip their hearts now. Show them who you are. Show them who you are, Father. You are the Father who says in Psalms 23 that you prepare a table in the front of our enemies, Father. So no matter how many times, no matter how many times the devil might come, try to kill and destroy and steal family from, from what God wants us to do. God is preparing a table for you. Right now, family, He's inviting you in your worship right now to just sit with Him in the presence of who Jesus is, of who God is. With the promise knowing that even if I walk through the valley of the shadow and death, I will fear no evil. Amen, family. Just proclaim that over your life. Just proclaim that over your life right now, family. Just worship Jesus. Worship Him for what He has done for you in this year. Worship Him for, for who He is, family. Get into the place, into the innermost rooms of your heart and go search for Him. David said, David said, search my heart, O Lord. Search my heart. Let the Lord search your heart now, family. And He will show you who He is. Just worship Him. Can we do this? Just a chorus once more. And family, I want to give you this, this opportunity right now. As God is calling you upon the waters. As God is calling you upon the waters right now. Know that if you say yes to this, He will never leave you. And if you keep your eyes on Him, family,
family there. The Lord wants you to open up your heart right now. And I don't want to drag this out for too long. But the Lord wants you to open up your heart. I know that He's calling on my heart right now. He wouldn't have given me that verse to say that Psalms 23. He wouldn't have given me that verse. He wants to lead you into a place of rest, family. He wants you to rest in His embrace now. And so, family, I want you just to just close your eyes, every single person, just for the benefit of those around you. And I just want you to acknowledge to God that you are opening up your heart to rest in His embrace. So, family, if you want to do that, just pop your arm up right now and say, yes, here I am. I want to rest in your embrace, Lord. I want you to lead me into a place of still waters. And I want you to prepare the table for me. I just want to come and sit and enjoy the presence of who you are. Amen and amen. Oh, family, that was so, so wonderful. Thank you for the worship team for leading us in what I think was a very, very special moment. And we're just going to keep this atmosphere if you want to keep on worshiping there will be some nice background music but we're going to take a 10 minutes break and then uh, i'm really excited for the word coming from alvain today but knowing that it is deposited by jesus amen amen family
All right. Great stuff, family. Okay, so I hope everyone uh, has their uh, coffee, their tea, for those of you who want to live healthy. Um, and uh, <laughs> if you were wondering who was the child who cried, it was him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's okay, it's okay. Okay, family, with no further ado, <laughs> I'm going to give that uh, to Alvain. Hey, good morning everyone. Hoe gaan dit goed? It's always good to be here with you guys. It's always such a pleasure um, to see everyone again. And this is the, the third time this year that I'm in Langebaan. From having never been here before to being here three times in a very short time. Um, but it's good. I really, I really enjoy Langebaan. I really do like it. Okay. So, um, where's, where's Robin? Is he here? Robin? Let's wait for Robin. Or if there's anyone else that can play the keyboard, you're also welcome. I'm not going to risk it to go play. Okay, Robin. Robin, I just I just feel the Lord wants to do something, so I just want you to play a bit background music, a bit. It's just something that I felt like the Lord wants to do. And I'm always pro like when the Holy Spirit changes up a schedule. We can get so fixed in how church must look, have an idea of church and trying to predict what God is gonna do when he wants to do it. And um I always pray this. I always say, Lord, come and and disrupt my schedule. Come and make me uncomfortable because I want the Lord to have his will and have his way. Because many times I can have an idea how a sermon must go and that might not be exactly what the Holy Spirit wants to do. So I'm always just open to these kind of things. And um, wh where's the man that sat here in front? The young man sat here in front. Okay, so I want to. I have a word for him as well, and um, I just want to pray for us to open, and then I'll share what I'm what I'm feeling the Lord is doing, and I feel this is appropriate because the Lord put the the subject on my heart to minister on the restoration of the true prophetic, and this is something that I've been feeling in my heart probably for the whole of this year, is just basically displaying to people what the true prophetic is to minister on it we had the prophetic school here in august um, which was very impactful very fruitful where you know um everyone that was in that class prophesied that day in some way they re received words they gave words and that is god's heart for for his children that this is for everyone that it's not just for the ministers not just for the prophets it is for everyone because you see in the new covenant of the holy spirit we are called to be priests and kings and prophets before the lord and i'll go a bit more into detail what that means um, i'm not so much going to focus on the gifting itself but more the concept of coming before the lord inquiring before the lord speaking on behalf of the lord speaking on behalf of him so let's just pray father i pray that you come in this session, in this sermon. Father, have your way, that you will move in this place. Holy Spirit, that you will come with your anointing, that you will fill this place. Father, I just take authority over this whole room, that no wicked spirit will try and disrupt what you want to do here. 
every religious spirit, we just bind you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of divination, every spirit trying to blind the people from receiving what you want to minister today, Lord. We just bind those spirits and I take authority over that. And Father, I pray for every person that came here, every hungry person, every person seeking freedom, every person seeking healing, Lord. Father, that you will grant them that, Father. Lord, that even you know our thoughts, even, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that you come with your anointing. Lord, I can do nothing in myself. I can do nothing in myself. Father, I pray that you come. Open their eyes, Lord. Open their ears. Father, use my mouth. Use my ears. Use my eyes, Father. Lord, I pray for, for, for visions, Father. Open visions. Close visions. Impressions, Father. Father, let the true prophetic arise today. And Lord, I pray that you come and confirm your word. Come and confirm your word, Father. And I pray this in Jesus' name. So everyone, just keep your eyes on the Lord. Just keep on focusing on Him. Just forget about me. Forget about my voice. Just keep on focusing on Him. Just keep on focusing upon Him. Just keep on focusing upon Him. And the Lord has just drawn my attention to you, something that I felt. You know, when I when I looked at you, I keep on seeing your face for the past few days before I was coming I just feel like the Lord wants to do something in your heart that he's already been doing it I see you turning away from a lifestyle that you used to be involved with and the Lord is tearing you away from that it's like you've already made the decision but there are still little fragments from an old life that's stuck And the Lord's removing everything from you. It's like He's doing surgery on your heart right now. And I know it's painful. I know it's discomforting. But I do want to tell you that you will not be a byproduct of your circumstances. You will not be a product of your mother's life, of your father's life. I don't know if you have a brother. You have a brother? Yeah. You're not going to be like him either. You're going to be something completely new. I see you breaking the cycle in your family. I see you breaking the cycle. And I see how you have paid much. You've sacrificed much to be here. I see a lot of zeal for the Lord. I see a lot of love for the Lord. So, Father, I pray for wisdom. Father, grant him wisdom. Wisdom in his life, Father, to make the right decisions. Father, I pray that you anoint him, Father, with a fire that he needs, Father. That Gen Z belongs to Jesus, Lord. That the younger generation belongs to Christ. Father, I pray that you will use this man in his friend groups. That you will send him back even into the places where he came from. Father, to evangelize for you. To speak for you. Father, give him boldness. Father, give him the fire of the Holy Ghost in his heart right now. Fill him all the way. Just fill him all the way. More of your fire. There you are. Fill him. Fill him all the way. Just give him more. More. Father, I pray that rivers of living water will flow out of him, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I don't know what the month of March means to you, but it's going to be a significant month for you. It's like a turning point. It's going to be a turning point for you. And Lord, I pray, it's like you're stuck in a, between a hard place and a rock right now with some decisions that you have to make. So Lord's going to give you wisdom for that. He's going to show you the way to go. He's going to get you through this. I also see that there is going to come salvation to your family. Certain people that haven't been open to the gospel always, that didn't want to hear what you want to say, I feel that they, they're going to be receptive to the Word of God because they're going to see the change in your life. 
And they're going to they're gonna see that something, something happened to you. You look different. You speak different. You think different. Because it's Christ that lives inside of you. And the Lord's going to use that in your friend group and in your family. So, Father, I just pray that you seal him off, Father, in the name of Jesus. Seal off everything that you want to do in his life. Use him mightily, Father, for revival in Gen Z. Revival in his school, friend group, family, all those places. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's something else that I see. I saw addiction breaking off of people. I saw addiction breaking off of people. I saw a group of people standing here right now and addiction breaking off of you. Now, this is addiction from cigarettes, vaping, alcohol. I see sleep medication. I see pain medication. There are people here that are addicted to certain things in their life. And the Lord is calling you to let those things go. Because you've created a dependency upon substances, upon things in your life. And the Lord is calling you to just be addicted to Him. Just be addicted to Christ. Now, I know there are some people. I even saw, you, you don't have to tell me exactly. You don't have to respond to this individually. I don't need to know what it is. But I see there's someone, I even see like crystals in your house. It's like you have depended upon small idols, small things to bring you luck, to bring you your charm. And I see the Lord wants to take that away and He wants to give you complete freedom. And ever since you've had these things, it's actually like things have just gotten worse for you. You got them for a reason and it's like it's just backfiring from that point is what I see. So I want to invite people if you know that there are things that you need to lay on the altar right now even if you have it in your pocket or anything I want you to come and lay it on the altar and be completely free of these things. I saw addiction breaking. But what you have to understand addiction is a spirit. It's a spirit that comes in through willful use of certain things. There's no shame. There's no condemnation in Christ. But I want, if there are people that are struggling with any form of addiction or dependency upon your life, I want you to come forward because I want to pray for you before we start. I want you to come forward and I want to pray for you. I'll give it 10 seconds for people to respond. If not, then it's over. I'm not going to pray afterwards. Then it's done with. Then we're finished. So I want those people to come forward. Just come stand here. I'm just going to pray for you. I'm not going to call out what it is. I'm not going to ask you what it is. I want you in your heart to let this go today. I need you in your heart to let this go just say to the Lord, Lord, I just want to depend upon you. I'm not depending upon any comfort of the world, not any substance of the world, but only you, Christ. Only you. I'm going to give five more seconds. I know there's someone else still. Five more seconds. Then I'm going to pray. And then we're going to move on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You can just all stand here. You can just stand in the line. It's fine. You can all just stand in the line. I just need some ushers, please, as well. Just need some ushers. Okay. So I'm just going to ask everyone standing here in front of me. I just want you to pray after me. Okay. I just need you to pray after me. Say, Lord Jesus, you are Lord of my life, and I only depend upon you. Holy Spirit, 
pray that you fill me and set me free. Right now, I renounce any dependency, any addiction, any substances, any comfort in my life that I have found outside of Christ. So every wicked spirit attached, I don't want you anymore. Holy Spirit, I just want you in the name of Jesus. So just hold your hands out like this. Just keep on focusing upon the Lord right now. And watch Him set you free. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you come right now. Fill these people afresh. Lord, we break off every spirit of addiction, every spirit of dependency right now. I break off of these people right now. So I speak to every single spirit that has attached itself to them, every wicked spirit that has come in through substance abuse, through nicotine, through alcohol, pornography, anything of that nature, any spirit of addiction, I break you off right now in the name of Jesus. And I command you to come out all the way. Come out. Yeah, come out. Leave them completely. Every single one of you come out right now. Come. I break you off of them. I break the power of addiction off of your life right now in the name of Jesus. Come. Come out. Every single one of you. Spirit of addiction must leave now. Come out right now. Every single spirit attached out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. You spirit of addiction. Come out. That dependency. Leave her now. Come out in the name of Jesus. Be free. Yeah, be free. Come out. Yeah, there you are. Come out all the way. All the way, set her free. Set her free. Freedom. Freedom right now. Yeah, freedom. Be free. Be free. Be free all the way. All the way. Every single spirit attached. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out all the way. All the way, I break the power of addiction right now. Come out. All the way. Yeah, there you are. Come out. All the way. All the way. Every single one of you, I break the power of addiction right now. I break every spirit. I break every lie right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out of him. Yeah, there you are. Come out. Come out. Come out. Every single spirit attached. Come out right now. Spirit of dependency and addiction. Come, set her free. There you are. There we go. Thank you. Every single spirit, leave her now. Leave her now. Come out right now. Thank you, Jesus. Set them free. Set them free. Father, I thank you, Lord. You know exactly what it is, Father. You know exactly what it is. I don't have to call it out, but set them free from it, Father, right now. Every spirit that came in, I command you to leave. Every spirit of dependency and addiction, Come out right now. Complete freedom right now. Come out. Out of his hands, out of his chest right now. Come out. Yeah, all the way. All the way. Every single one of you come. Set him free. Set him free. Yeah, come out. Come out. Come out. Your time is up. Set him free completely. Set him free. There you are. Come. Be free out in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus thank you Lord that you set them free that you set them free thank you Lord that you work in their hearts right now set them free they've renounced those spirits now come out of them completely every single spirit of addiction right now come out right now spirit of dependency come out right now right now I command every wicked spirit to come out that's been attached to your life Come, loose him. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out all the way. All the way from his belly, out of his chest right now. Yeah, there you are. The Lord is healing your heart right now. He's healing your heart. Yeah, just let it go. Just let it go. He's healing your heart right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're so gentle. 
that you're so gentle. Fill him with your love. Fill him. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, keep on working in his heart right now. Father, I just break the curse of addiction right now in his life. In the name of Jesus. Come, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Come out all the way. Every single spirit attached, I loose you from him right now. Under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, leave him. Yeah, there you go. Come out. Come out all the way. Set him free. Set him free. I detach you from his heart right now. I loose you from him completely. You will stop tormenting his life. You will stop ruling his schedule around these things. You will stop stealing his finances as well. Because this thing has been costing you money. Loose. Loose from his heart right now in the name of Jesus. Loose. Yeah, come out. Come out right now. I break the power of addiction over your life in the name of Jesus. You will walk out of here and you will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus. Every wicked spirit must bow to the name of Christ right now. Thank you, Lord. There's the release. There's the release. There's the release. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray that you increase the anointing right now to break every yoke every yoke that's been upon their lives right now every spirit of addiction every spirit of dependency to break off of them completely to break off of them completely right now in the name of jesus let it go let those things go let those idols go let them go completely every spirit of it of addiction come out set them free thank you lord Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you work inside of his heart right now. Every spirit attached, every spirit of addiction that he has renounced, you must leave completely right now, all the way. Thank you, Jesus. And also every single spirit that has been messing with his temper, I command you to leave with them all the way all the way every single one attached Holy Spirit fill him with your fire fill him with your fire right now burn clean every single spirit every wicked spirit be loosed from him right now in the name of Jesus thank you Lord so Father I pray that you keep on working in their lives that you keep on sanctifying their lives father thank you lord for their obedience thank you lord that they want to be set free from these kind of things so father i pray that you seal off everything that you just did in the name of jesus amen 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 can we just give a, a round of applause to these people There's, there's something special that happens when you, when you respond to, to what the Lord is doing in your heart. And I always just want to honor the people that, that respond to these kind of things. I always just want to honor the people that respond to it. And I believe that the Lord truly does see that. Okay. Donkey. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I should probably get to preaching. Okay, so the, the topic that the Lord put on my heart is the restoration of the true prophetic. And I want us to look at, at a biblical perspective from what does it mean to, to be prophetic, but not just that, because we're all called to walk in the new covenant prophetic. If you look at 1 Corinthians 14, it says, Pursue love, but eagerly desire spiritual gifts and especially that you will prophesy now i always put it this way if paul says eagerly desire this go after this god wouldn't tell us something if it wasn't available for everyone all right so think of it that way and many people think that they need a middleman to to talk to god they need a prophet to come and give them a word they need to you know someone else must come from the outside 
uh, between them and God. And that was never the intention of the new covenant Holy Spirit. In the old covenant, um, that is how it worked. There were priests, there were prophets, there were kings, and they were anointed. And God spoke through them to the people. But if we look at the first account in Exodus 20, verse 18 to 21. Now, this is after the Israelites, they have just come out of Egypt. And um, they're starting to, to build this relationship with God. And then God actually invites them up up the mountain with Moses and says, come, I want to speak directly to you. All right, so verse 18. Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Then they said to Moses, you speak with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. Now, in this account, God invites the people up to the mountain because he wants to speak to them face to face. God is saying that he doesn't want a middleman anymore. Okay? If we look at the garden, it was God's plan in intent and will to speak directly with man, to walk with man, to commune with man in the garden of Eden. Now at the fall, that was taken away. But here we see it again, God reaching out to mankind, saying that, I want to speak to you. I want to come face to face and be with you. But the account just keeps on repeating itself where man says, you know what, Moses, you go and speak to the people. We're too afraid. Because, I mean, who wouldn't be afraid? If you look at this mountain, you see the thundering and the lightning and the smoke coming out. And they were afraid. They said, Moses, you go up to the mountain. You speak to us. We'll, we'll listen what you are saying. And you can talk to God. He's way too scary for us. And I think even today people think that way. Where they think that either they're not worthy to speak directly to God, that they must come to a Sunday service and that is where God will speak to them. But in actual fact, God wants to speak to you Monday to Saturday and Sunday. Sunday is just the community gathering. All right, God wants a personal relationship with every single one of us. And then we go a little bit further in Numbers 11, where the people start complaining. Now, they've been in the desert for quite some time in Numbers 11, and they start complaining because all that they've been eating is manna for a very long time. Manna was like a bread-like substance, okay? They baked it into cakes, and that's all that they ate. So it's obvious that they started complaining. I think most South Africans would, would also start complaining because there was no meat involved. And in Numbers 11, we see the first account of people complaining that there is no flesh. Okay? And they start complaining. They say, Moses, we, we can't just eat this. We need more substance. We need more meat. And um, Moses goes to God and he says, you know what, Lord, why are these people complaining? Why are they coming to me? You sent me into the wilderness to lead these people. And now they keep on coming to me. And Moses acknowledged that the burden is too great for him to carry alone. And I believe that God wanted him to come to that point to realize that he alone cannot carry the burden. And God today also wants us to realize that, that we cannot carry the burden alone. It's like Heinz spoke about the rest of God. And for most charismatic Christians, it's the most difficult thing to just rest in God. We always want to praise and shout and jump up and down and pray in tongues and read our Bible and lay hands on people. And oftentimes God is just inviting us to just be with Him, to just rest in Him. That was a word for someone. Someone needed to hear that, that you need to rest in God. You need to stop striving that God will do it. You need to trust in His provision, in His way of doing things. So God comes up with a solution. He says to Moses, okay, gather 70 of your elders Select them for me and bring them before the tabernacle. So he brings them into the tent of meeting. Seventy elders gather. And God says, I will take the same spirit that's upon Moses and I will place it upon the 70 elders. It doesn't mean that the 70 elders, all of a sudden, they're also prophets. It doesn't mean that. He just said that I'll take that same spirit and put it upon them and they will carry the burden with you. 
So if you look at Numbers 11, verse 25, Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took of the Spirit that was upon him, upon Moses, and placed the same upon the seventy elders. And it happened, when the Spirit rested upon them, that they prophesied, although they did so never again. And what this means is that it doesn't mean that the, the calling and the ministry that Moses has was transferred to them. It was only the ability to come before, come before the Lord and listen what he is saying so that they can carry the burden with him and go out. And the reason that I'm highlighting this, because here we see God's heart for the prophetic, God's heart for his people. Something interesting happened when the Spirit fell upon the 70 elders. There were two men, and they were outside the camp. Their names were Eldad and Medad. And the Spirit fell upon them as well. Now, they weren't part of the 70 original. They weren't around the tabernacle. But the Spirit fell upon them as well. And it said that they also prophesied in the camp. Now, I'll get to what prophesying means, exactly what it means. It, it's not always what people think. It's a foretelling of what's going to happen, what's your five-year plan with the Lord. Oftentimes, it's just speaking into your current situation. What is God saying about you right now in this situation that you are in? Okay, so the Spirit fell upon these two men as well, and they prophesied. Now, here we see Aaron, which was Moses' assistant. He comes to Moses in his, and, he, and he tells him about this account. You can read this in chapter 11, verse 28. I'm trying to paraphrase here because we've got quite a lot to go through. Verse 28, so Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, sorry, it was Joshua, not Aaron, Moses' assistant, one of his choice men, answered and said, Moses, my Lord, forbid them. So he told them about these two people prophesying and he came and he said, Moses, we need to stop this because now everyone's prophesying. We can't allow this. Okay, this was his assistant. He was just looking out for Moses. And then Moses says, are you zealous for my sake? Oh, that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. So you see, Two interesting things happen here. We see uh, Joshua complaining, saying to Moses, look, we got to stop this. Everyone is prophesying now. But in fact, he was zealous for Moses. He was looking out for Moses' ministry. He was trying to protect that ministry because Moses was an anointed man. He had a clear gift. And Joshua was trying to protect that ministry. But Moses comes and he says, you know what? I wish that all of you were prophets of the Lord. Not that they were, but that was his will and intention. So God is displaying his heart for people. And we still see this today where very anointed men and women of God, specifically uh, in the fivefold and more specifically prophets today, that they don't want to impart, they don't want to teach, they don't want to give what the Lord has given them upon their lives. And if you think about it this way, it's a, it's a pity because then your gift will die with you. Your anointing will die with you. So your gift and your anointing has an expiration date then. And I believe that God anoints people, He calls people, and that we are called for the ministry of, yes, reconciliation with God, but also dispersing what God has given us to teach it out. Because the main uh, ministry of the fivefold is to train and equip the body of Christ. But here we have one day I was spending time with the Lord and I said, Lord, why? Why aren't there prophets teaching on how to prophesy, how to flow in the gifts, how to operate in this ministry that you're clearly inviting everyone into, inviting everyone to take part of? Why aren't we seeing it? And he said, Alva and my prophets have been building mansions and ministries and not my people. And we see that today. Unfortunately, we do see that. And that's why I'm so passionate about this topic of the restoration of, one, what does it mean to be prophetic? And two, how can we all walk in this new covenant blessing, this new covenant gift? Because it is for everyone. And in 
in layman's terms, what does it mean? The word prophet just means to be in front of the Lord, to be before Him, to speak on behalf of Him, and sometimes the foretelling. Sometimes, not every time. So what it means, I'll read you the Strong's definition of it. Strong's concordance. A prophet declares the mind, the message of God, which sometimes predicts the future, but more commonly speaks forth his message for a particular situation. So now do you understand why, why God wants us all to come before him, to speak on his behalf? Because you see, we're, we're a community, we're a family of Christians, all right? We are called to speak into each other's lives, not just the pastor, not just the guy in front. You are called for each other and for the world around us. Can you imagine how much more effective it would be if everyone would prophesy? Now prophesying basically in, in the New Testament is just edifying, encouraging, exhorting. In the Old Covenant, it, was, it looked slightly different, you know, the prophets of old, how it looked. It looked it, the whole ministry actually changed. When we entered into the New Covenant, the Covenant of Grace, everything changed. Everything changed for us. Even how the gifts operate changed. Now, I want you to go, if you have your Bible, go to Joel 2.28. Now, this is Prophet Joel prophesying of the great outpouring of God's Spirit. Verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I just quickly want to bring your attention to that because it talks about God's intention is, I want to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. If you look at the Old Testament, He, he placed His spirit upon select men and women. Only the prophets prophesied. Only the kings got anointed. Only the priests came before the Lord. So this is the prophet Joel prophesying is saying that it's God's will and his heart that he pours out his spirit upon every single one. And that's the good news. That's the good news of the gospel. That he wants to touch every single person. He wants to come upon every single person. So you see, everything that you read in the Old Testament, the stories of Moses, of Abraham, the, the Abrahamic blessing, all these things, the works that Elijah did, Elisha did, that is for today and it is for everyone. And it's available to us. So when Jesus came, he didn't just preach the gospel. Um, he displayed the gospel as well. He displayed the kingdom of God. He displayed what it means to be a believer in Christ. So when he came, he anointed the twelve, his disciples, and he sent them out. And his words were, the works that I have done, you will also do. Because that is your commission. So for us as Christians, that is our commission. That's where the Great Commission comes from. Go into all the nations and make disciples of them. And these signs shall follow those that believe. You will cast out devils. You will take up serpents. You will drink anything deadly. It won't hurt you. And you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So you see, God has made the anointing available to every single person. Now, I want to draw your attention to Acts 2, verses 1 to 4. Now, this is the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The great outpouring when the Holy Spirit came. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a, ru as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterances. So when this happened, when the Holy Spirit filled them, it came upon them, 
they started speaking in other tongues. They started speaking in other languages. They were Greeks. They were Hebrew. They were Syrians, uh, Moabites, Tishbites. All these different nations were there. And they started speaking in their tongues. Now, another very popular sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit, we all say that, you know, speaking in tongues is the, is the most prominent sign that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. And it probably is, but it, there's a lot more than that. We cannot dilute the baptism of the Holy Spirit to speaking in tongues. Because then you are saying, I am diluting a whole person, a whole entity to a mere gift. He's a lot more than that. See, that's where we come from, where Christ in you, the hope of glory, it's not just a gift. It's not just speaking in tongues. But a popular sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit, if you look at Acts 19, verse 6, it says they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they spake with other tongues, and they prophesied. So that was a popular sign of being filled with the Holy Ghost, is that you prophesy, is that you speak the mind and will and heart of God. So after this happened, there was quite a big crowd coming and surrounding them. Because here we have 120 people in the upper room. Um, and now all of a sudden they're speaking with other tongues, they're prophesying, and they're doing the works of Christ. And no one really knew what was going on. And some people said that these people are drunk with wine. And Peter said, no, we're not drunk as you would suppose. We are filled with the Holy Ghost. We're filled with the new wine. And then he quoted Joel 2.28. He says, this is what the prophet Joel spoke about. Because they were unsure what was happening. And he said, no, no, no. Have a look. This was prophesied. And we are walking in this right now. So if you go to Acts 2.17, it is basically a paraphrase, a quotation of Joel 2.28. And he was saying, everything that you're seeing right now was prophesied. And it's coming to fulfillment. So Acts 2, the infilling of the Holy Ghost, is a fulfillment of a prophecy that went out. And I want to tell you the good news, that we are living in those times right now. We Think about this for one moment. All the things that the prophets prophesied from 700 years before Christ was even born, you are living that right now. And I think we forget that sometimes. We become so accustomed to religious activities and just, you know, the Western world of thinking of what it means to be a Christian. And I feel like really the Lord wants to break that. He wants to break that mindset of, of just forming, you know, this, it's just part of your faith. It's just religion. So what you have to understand, it's the living God living inside of you. He's more than just speaking in tongues. It's like an atomic bomb living inside of you. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So then we go to 1 Corinthians 14, which I already mentioned, which talks about pursue love, but eagerly desire spiritual gifts. It's the only place in the New Testament where you are allowed to desire something, where you are allowed to lust after something. And that is the Holy Spirit and His gifts that He has to offer. Desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you would prophesy. So as I said, this is the gift to desire. Everyone can do it. Paul commissions us, desire. if you want to desire any gift, desire this. And I'll tell you why. Because in the New Testament, there's, a, there's an account in Acts 9 where Paul gets, or Saul, gets converted to Paul. And what happens at that stage, he gets struck blind, he falls off his donkey, he goes to Jerusalem, they take him there. And here we have the, the Pharisee of Pharisees, as he puts it himself, he was a man killing Christians, persecuting them. He was actually holding the Pharisee's coat when Stephen was killed. Can you, can you imagine this? I think it's in Acts 7. He was literally holding their coat while people were getting killed. Can you imagine the shock Ananias got when he heard the Lord say, I want you to go to this uh, straight street, go to this man's house, and there's a man, and his name is Saul. He must have thought, Lord, 
do you have the right person here? Do you even know what he did? He's killing Christians. He's persecuting them. If I go there, he's probably going to kill me. Now, Ananias was a prophet. He's a New Testament prophet. And what happened at that moment, he lays hands upon him. Saul gets converted unto Paul. So here we have someone that had letters to kill Christians. He literally had, it's like wanted letters in his hand when he was on his donkey, on his way to, uh, from the road to Damascus. He had those letters in his hand. And when he got converted, he became one of the most well-known apostles that we have today, where he wrote a third of the New Testament. So from someone that letters to kill, from letters that teach Christians how to live. And I want to tie the knot because that's the power of prophecy. He got encountered by the Holy Spirit. Well, Jesus himself knocked him off his horse, told him the things to come. And he actually told him, you will face many persecutions for my name's sake. He told him that, told him exactly what he's going to do. So there we have it where God is revealing his heart to Paul at that stage. He's prophesying to him what is going to happen, but also what you're going through right now. And that's the power of prophecy. It transforms us. When someone gives you a word, it changes you on the inside. There's something that shifts when someone gives you a word. I can't explain it. I don't know how it works. I'm not going to pretend to. Why is it when the Lord gives us a word of knowledge for someone that needs healing? He pulls him out of a crowd and we've prayed for that same person many times before. And then right at that moment, when they get pulled out of the crowd, they get healed. I remember the last time I was here, the Lord showed her to me. 30 years ago, she had a car accident and she got healed and the pain left her. Because what you have to understand, when prophecy, when you prophesy, it is God's words in your mouth going forth. It's not human words going forth. It's God using you. Because you see, God is looking for a power outlet. He's looking for a power outlet. He can heal everyone. But He's looking for you and He said, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Do we think that God can't do it? But He needs us. He wants to use us. That is the whole gospel. He wants to use mankind. That's why He created Adam and Eve. To do fellowship with to till the grounds, to do these things with. Now, I believe that the enemy, he prostitutes anything of value that the Lord has. Satan can't create anything. He just counterfeits, cheats, lies, comes and steals. And that's why he, there's so much attack on the prophetic. So much attack because it is so powerful. It's so powerful. The two topics that there is the most contention about is probably praying in tongues and prophesying. Those two things. People struggle with that the most. They don't know if it's for today. And um, when we look at what is a false prophet? Now we heard this many times before that Jesus said that in the last days there will come false teachers and false prophets. I read something the other day that really disturbed me on the inside and this comes from and i'm not here to talk down on other people and ministries and anything i don't need to call names or anything but it's something that i saw that is really disturbing is someone making a post and this is a christian with i don't know them personally by the way they have hundreds and thousands of people following their ministry but they will use scripture to twist it in a way by saying that Elijah was struggling with mental illness and he was struggling with suicidal thoughts. And they use the scripture, I believe it's in 1 Kings 19 or 9, I think it's 19, yes, where it talks about Elijah where he was running from Jezebel and he was praying to the Lord saying, please take me from this. Now we all know what happened. He went and hid in the mountain and then the wind came and the fire came. It's that account. But you see, they will use scripture to twist it in a way to make us believe that it's okay to have suicidal thoughts. 
and that's a false teacher. So in these days, a false teacher isn't someone that wears a pentagram around their neck and saying, turn away from Christ. It can be, but I don't believe that was what Jesus specifically was talking about. These things happen right in our midst, where people use Scripture to twist it. Because I believe they just don't understand the full gospel. Jesus Christ paid for all those things. Paid for your healing, paid for your salvation, paid for your mental illness. He paid for all those things. But they will use Scripture to twist it in a way for you to make you believe that it's okay to have suicidal thoughts. And you know what? I can speak into this because I was there. I was there with that I wanted to take my life. So I feel that I can speak into this. I'm not being, uh, you know, not being sympathetic towards people that really struggle with those things because I have been there. So I can talk into this. And I know in a big crowd like this, there are always people that struggle with mental health. Always. And I want to tell you that there is freedom in Christ. That He has paid for it. That you don't have to struggle with these kind of things. That it's not normal for a Christian to be struggling with these kind of things. Okay. So if you look at Jeremiah 23, it gives us the account of what is a false prophet and empty oracles. You can go and read and study that whole section. It's quite elaborate. They go into all the details of what exactly does it mean? What is a false prophet? But there are a few things that I just really want to highlight for us. I'm not going to go into everything because there's just too much. So the first thing that he talks about in verse 11, for both the prophet and the priest are profane. Now what that means is they have no regard for the word of God. The fear of God has left them. Where they don't care what they say, they just go ahead and they just blurt it out. And I've always preached this and I always believe that we need a, a healthy understanding and impartation with the fear of God. We need that. You need to pray for that, that the fear of God may rule your life. Because it's the fear of God that will keep you from sinning. It's the fear of God. It's the reality of who God is and what He paid for that will keep us from sinning. The second one, and caused my people Israel to err. Also, I have seen a horrible thing in the prophets of Jerusalem. They commit adultery and walk in lies. Now, I've multiple times we see this where great anointed men, a woman of God, you can see the anointing upon their life. You can see the hand of God upon their life. But then they go and sleep with their spiritual sons and daughters. They go and uh, steal money. You know, they go and fornicate and then do these things. Now people, these are people that profess Christ, that preach the gospel, and they do these things. Now I want to invite you that you must always test the fruit of someone's life. Go and look what's going on in their life. And not just the anointing. Not just the anointing. Because you see, there's a verse that says, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So if you think that, oh, this person is so gifted, he gets all the words of knowledge, he must be in right standing with God. That's not true. It's not true. God will use someone even if his life isn't 100% in line on the highway of holiness. Second point, they, may, they speak a vision of their own heart not from the mouth of the Lord. They continually say to those who despise me, the Lord has said, you shall have peace. And to everyone who walks according to the dictates of his own heart, they say no evil shall come upon you. Let me tell you practically, this is verse 17. Practically how this looks is one, they prophesy from their soul dimension. Now if you've been in any of the training courses where we talk about the prophetic that is oftentimes how God will speak to us, is through our imagination and our minds, our mind's eye. So you will see things pop up in your imagination, and God will use that to speak to us. Now what, these, what a false prophet does is that God never spoke to them. It's just images of their own mind, and they prophesy from their flesh. They only prophesy wealth and prosperity, but nothing about the cross. Nothing about getting people closer to Christ. So prophecy in the Old Testament drew attention to Jesus Christ, drew people back to the Lord, 
drew people from repenting and coming back to Christ. I believe that same principle we still see in the New Testament, where all prophecy must pull us towards Christ. Otherwise, what is it? Then it's a show. Then it's a magic trick. Oh, I knew your birthday. Okay, I knew your son's name. I knew how many children you have. Then it's just a wow moment. But if that doesn't lead us to repentance and closer relationship with Christ, I don't see the value in it. I'll be honest with you. So for me, I honestly don't care how gifted you are. I don't care how many words of knowledge you get. I don't care how well you predict the weather or the future. If it doesn't lead me closer to Christ, then I will question where the gift is from. Because you do get divination. It does exist today. What do you think are tarot card readers? Or people that read palms, crystal balls, all those kind of things, new age teachings, the spirit of divination. Those are people that are actually legitly prophetic. That God has gifted them with a prophetic gift. But they've just used it for darkness. And one time I've seen these things, I've seen people that are really gifted, and I say, Lord, why are you allowing this? How can these people still operate in the gift that you gave them, but they're not using it for your glory? How is that possible? And the Lord said, Alvin, a spiritual gift is exactly the same as a natural gift. It's how I made you with a unique set of gifts. If you're good in sport, you can either give God honor and glory for it, or you don't have to. Same thing. God's not going to take away the gift because the gifts and callings are without repentance. So it's the same with the spiritual gift. You can be how gifted and you can honestly choose with it and do with it what you want and God won't take it away. But I am warning you that there is coming a day of judgment for everyone and how you have stewarded what the Lord has given you and how you have used what the Lord has given you. Because unfortunately we do see how people use natural gifts for money, but also spiritual gifts to gain fame, fortune from it. And it's very possible. You see it today. I'm trying to give you an explanation of how the dark kingdom also uses these kind of things. Because the word of God clearly points it out to us. This is a verse that you can highlight. It's verse 21, Jeremiah 23, 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they would have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. You see, this is another invitation in the negative form, but it's, it's an invitation to come before the counsel of God and listen, what is he saying? To come before the Lord and say, Lord, what do you want to tell your people? What do you want to tell this person? God invites us to come boldly before the throne of grace to inquire. And this is it, you know, where you're naturally gifted, you might be prophetic, but you never went and actually heard what the Lord wants to say. What does He want to convey? What does He want to speak through you? Now, I don't just want to focus on the, the negative and the false. I want to draw our attention to what it means to truly speak for the Lord. And I believe this is the restoration of the true prophetic. This account that we see in 1 Kings 22. Now it's quite a, a lengthy account and I'm once again going to summarize it a bit for you. And this is where it's in the time of Elijah and we see the prophet Micaiah. And there are two kings where King Ahab was the king of Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah, which is the northern kingdom. And Israel is the southern kingdom. And they were getting ready. Well, actually, King Ahab was getting ready to invade Syria, which is like northeast on the map from them. And they were getting ready to invade Syria. And what these kings would do is they would go and they would call all the prophets together and try and get their blessing upon what they're going to do. They would inquire from the oracles what they're going to do. And what we saw in these times is they would literally go to all the prophets, prophets of Baal and all other demonic forces, but they would also inquire of the Lord. But these are pagan kings. Ahab was uh, Jezebel's husband. Everyone knows Jezebel? 
okay, the lelike tani, evil tani, that really does not like the prophetic, very manipulative spirit. Anyway, Ahab was her um, husband. He was the king of Israel at that time. Now, we see this account where they go to the prophets and they inquire from them. And then Jehoshaphat, well, I think they get like 400 prophets together, right? 400, that's how many they were. They were, well, probably a lot more than that, but you can see a numerous amount of them. And they were getting them all together. And then Jehoshaphat said, like, we need a prophet of the Lord to come. And let's hear what he says. Jehovah, God, let's hear what he says. And this is that account. Now, Micaiah comes, and um, Jehoshaphat actually says, there is one more, and his name is Micaiah. And then Ahab's response was, yeah, I know about Micaiah, but I don't like him. I really don't like him. He always just says negative things about me. Let's, let's just leave him out. Let's just not get him in because he's just going to prophesy evil things. And when I read this, it actually made me think of, don't we do the same thing? Don't we ask people's opinions who we know are going to give us the right answer? We do that. Subconsciously, we do that. I do it myself as well. Where I've already made a decision in my heart that I want to do something, and then I go and ask the people who I know will approve of my decision. But it's true. So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And now we see the, the following account. So what happens here is they gather all the prophets, and he actually tries to manipulate Micaiah. He says, look here. Um, all these prophets say that we should invade Ramath Gilead. That was the area that we're going to invade. So you better prophesy what they're saying. Okay? You, you, can't, you can't say something else. And that will always be the, I would say, the, the task, the temptation for a prophet is to not go with the flow of what everyone is saying but to only speak what the Lord is saying. To only speak what the Lord is saying. And that is the true prophetic. I don't care what the world is saying. And we see this a lot with presidential um, elections in America, for instance, where everyone is just prophesying in one direction. But it's actually coming from their soul dimension, where it's something that they really want to make happen. It's their own agenda, their own prerogative that they want to bring across. In fact then the things never come true and it's like, okay, where are all the prophets now? Because they don't, they're not accountable to their words. I would much, much more respect someone that says, you know what, I missed this one. I'm sorry, I missed this one. Let's go, let's go forward. Luckily, you're in the covenant of grace and you don't get killed for missing a prophecy because Old Testament prophets were killed at that point. Okay. So verse 10, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, having put on their robes, sat each on his throne at a threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. Now Zedekiah, the son of Shenanah, had made horns of iron for himself. And he said, thus says the Lord, with these you shall gore the Syrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, and the Lord will deliver it into the king's hand. So to paint you a picture, what they're doing, he literally made horns of iron and put it on his head, and he put up a show before the king. And he was like enacting out what was going to happen. Now, we still see this today, where it's a showmanship, where people... We see this a lot in deliverance ministry, unfortunately. You see it a lot in prophetic ministry and also in any other anointed ministry. People put up a show. They put up a show before the people because it's entertainment to them. So you can see this comes from the Bible where people did it even in those times. So they were so confident in what they were hearing. He made these horns and saying, yeah, you will gore the Syrians with these. You will kill them like I'm doing right now with these horns. And they all prophesied in that one direction. 
everyone saying the same thing. Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him saying, Now listen, the words of the prophets with one accord encourage the king. Please let your word be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. So this is like going behind the scenes and saying, listen, yeah, they're all prophesying this. You have to say the same thing. And Micaiah says, as the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. And then Micaiah, you know, I love the sense of humor that he actually has. Then he came to the king and the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or shall we refrain? And he answered him, go and prosper for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. So here he is mockingly saying, go ahead, you're going to prosper. And he was saying exactly what the others were saying. But he was saying it like tongue in his cheek because the king got angry. He said, so the king said to him, how many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? So he knew that he was wrong. He knew that he was busy making a joke of him. And then he told him the truth. He said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the response of Ahab was incredible. He goes to Jehoshaphat. He said, look there. I told you he's going to prophesy evil. I told you. And he just did it. And he's going on. He said, look, we should have never even got this guy. Throw him in prison. Throw him in prison and release him when I come back. And Micaiah's response was, well, you're not going to come back because you're going to die in battle. So you realize the implication here. He threw him in prison and he said, you are sentenced until I come back. And Micaiah said, look, you're not going to come back. So I'm going to be here now. So he was obedient even when he knew it would keep him in prison because he was obedient to what the Lord was saying, no matter the consequences. His faith in the Lord to release him from prison was greater than the faith of you know, prophesying what he wants to hear and sparing him from prison because he, doesn't, he, he, just, he didn't mind being in prison for the Lord because of being obedient to him being obedient to Christ. Jesus said, it is the wisdom of God to persecute the prophets and kill them. One day, I'll definitely ask him about that verse, exactly what it means. But um, it's the wisdom of God to, for these messengers of Christ to be persecuted. Because you see, if you speak for Christ and what He wants to convey through you, it doesn't matter what happens to you. Because obedience is above your circumstances, above your, your comfort. And we need to get to that point as messengers for the Lord. Now, this verse, and I'm going to end off with this one. This verse, to me, describes two verses, exactly what it means to operate in a new covenant um, position as a voice for the Lord, as a messenger for Christ. And as I said, this message isn't just focused on people that are called to the prophetic. This is a message for everyone to come before the Lord and listen what He's saying, inquire from the Lord, and being a voice to the world outside. Being a voice to the world outside. If we look at Revelations 19 verse 10, see if we can get it up here, towards the end of it, where it says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. As I mentioned earlier, all prophecy must lead us back to God. It must leave us, lead us back to Jesus. Because everything comes from Him, and it makes a full circle, and it goes back to Him. The other thing, we always think that whatever we receive, we need to speak out. We need to tell people now i got some revelation now i need to go and share it with the world amos 3 7 says that the lord does nothing without telling it to his servants the prophets so there's something very special about this so the lord will share things with us just because we're his friends he's he called abraham and moses the friend of god 
And we're all called into that of being friends of God. So there are some things that the Lord wants to share with you, some things He wants to tell you that aren't necessarily meant to go out there. Because imagine this, if you told your best friend secrets of your heart, and he just goes out and he shares it with the world on a loudspeaker. And that loudspeaker is social media. Can God trust you with revelation, with secrets of his heart, and knowing that you have the character, you have the discernment to not say everything? Because that's where we get in trouble, is where we say everything that God has given us. And what I've learned is, there's a very important process involved of building character and building trust with the Lord. Now, I can't remember the exact verse, but it's said of Jesus that even Jesus grew in reputation with God and the people. So even Jesus had to build up a relationship with God and the people. And we, we shouldn't think that we're exempt from that. That you build a relationship with God, you build trust with the Lord. I think it's more that we need to trust Him because He always trusts us. But we need to trust Him through the trials in our life, through the circumstances in our life. And also with people. And I always thank the Lord that we all want to be seen, we all want a platform. But praise God that He hasn't given you that before your time. That you can make your mistakes while no one is looking. So the New Testament prophetic is being a messenger for Christ. It's coming before the Lord. Listen what he wants to say and speak it to the world outside. And I want to encourage, you know, if you feel called to a prophetic ministry, it's one of the most exciting journeys with the Lord that there is. It's going to take you deeper into the heart of God than you ever thought you could go. It's going to learn you trust and faith like you never thought you had. Because speaking for the Lord does take a lot of faith, does take a lot of trust to come before Him, to speak on His behalf. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with that. And um, I'm going to ask, where's my chomi? I say. Can you come up again? So, okay, thank you, Jesus. I just want to, I just want to follow the flow of the Holy Spirit right now, and um, some things that I that I felt to share. So, the past few weeks, the past few months basically that I've been ministering I really felt a a grace for healing specifically is what I see and I know I mean I'm I'm still trusting for my own healing and my own miracle but I know there are people here that are stretching out their faith to be touched by the Lord to be healed by the Lord so if you want to come into agreement with me because I believe the Lord wants to touch some people he wants to heal some people right now Maybe it's inner wounds or physical wounds that the Lord will come and have His way. So afterwards, I will pray for a few people. I will pray for a few people. <clears throat> but the Holy Spirit is here and... Um, He's willing. I've got the faith to put my hands on you and pray for you. You just need the faith to believe that the Lord will heal you. All right? And um, a few things that I saw. Now, I'll try and explain this. That's just the teacher side of me coming out. Like, before I, before I come and minister, I would oftentimes see the room and I would either know that there are people in a certain area that need healing from a certain thing, or I would see a specific person even, or I would just see a body part. And I'll, I'll explain a bit now how that works, or you'll see how that works. But I'm really putting my faith out there that God really knows 
every person's here's need. He knows that. He knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. And there are some people that have been, it's like the, the lady that has been st- struggling with the issue of blood. We just reached out for the hem of Jesus' garment. And today we can do the same by reaching out to the Lord and just touching His hem. Just pulling with your faith. Just pulling on Him. And I believe the Lord will meet us today with that. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you come and reveal, Father, by the prophetic, by your Spirit. Lord, you get all the glory for every single thing. That you will come and reveal to us things that people are struggling with. People that need healing in their body. Father, that you will come and meet us, Lord. Come and meet with us, Father. Come and touch us, Lord Jesus. Come and heal our bodies. Father, I just take authority over every spirit of affliction, every disease, every sickness. That your time is up. You must leave these people. You will stop tormenting these people more pain in their body, no more affliction. Your time is finished right now. So I just, I see someone here in the left side and I believe it's more or less in the front. I see like someone with back pain sitting right here in this area. Someone here with back pain sitting right here in this area is what I feel that's you I just want you to respond to it I'm not going to ask you to come forward I just want you to stand up right where you are exactly where you are it's what I see okay so Father in the name of Jesus I pray that you touch her body right now and heal every single pain in her back right now in the name of Jesus Every single spirit attached, causing pain in her body, I command you to come out of her and leave her completely. Father, that you will heal her body completely. No more pain in her back, no more pain between her shoulders, no more pain going up in her head, no more tension, headaches. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. As I said, tension, headaches, uh, there's someone else with tension, headaches, I believe it's also in this area. It's just what I felt. I believe it's a woman. You've got tension headaches. Is that you? Okay, you as well? All right, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you touch them right now, Father. Heal their heads, Father. Heal their necks, Father. No more headache. In the name of Jesus, complete healing right now. Holy Spirit, fill them afresh. Touch them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's also a man sitting in the left in front while I'm here. There's a man, there's hearing problems right here. There's a man with hearing problems in front. There's someone in the left side hearing problems. Is that you, sir? I prayed for you the previous time. Is that right? I remember your face, yeah. I just want to put my hand on your ear. Just stand there, just come a little bit forward. Okay, so Father, in the name of Jesus... Complete healing right now of his ear. Complete healing right now in the name of Jesus. Father, no more humming or that zoom sound anymore in the name of Jesus. Is that right? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Complete healing right now. Complete healing in the name of Jesus. Touch. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that sound's going to go away. That sound's going to go away. Yeah. Yeah. Heard that zoom, it's gonna go away. Yeah. <laughs> Is that for all the young people? You're not supposed to sit in front of the TV. Okay. Okay. You don't hear what they say. Okay. Do you hear the sound constantly? Okay. Okay. 
I believe the Lord's going to touch you here. I believe it. That's what I saw. And um, there's, there's someone there at the back as well. Now, I'm just going to be obedient. So there's someone there at the back. I saw like a, it's a tumor or a growth. Now, I know there's someone that didn't pitch up today with that problem, but I'm still being obedient. Is there someone there at the back in this section with a tumor or a growth? I believe it's a lady. Okay. Is that you? I want you to respond if there's anyone there. I know there is one lady that did not come today, but I'm still going to be obedient because maybe there's another person. So if that is you, I want you to respond right now. You don't have to tell me where it is and what it's doing. But if there is a person, I want you to just to respond. As I said, I'm, I'm not going to pray afterwards specifically for these things because there's a grace and an anointing for healing in this moment. Okay, that's something that we do need to understand. All right. I saw someone with, um, I hate to use that word, but you had COVID and I don't think you got your taste back completely. It's like I saw taste buds or something. But I believe it's something that was left over from, you know, residual, um, maybe COVID or something. Is someone here with taste buds? You haven't gotten your taste back or your smell back completely. That's what I saw. Is that you? Okay. You can just stand there. Just hold up your hand. So, Father, in the name of Jesus... I pray that you touch him right now, that you heal his taste buds, heal his smell. In the name of Jesus, complete healing right now. Father, I pray that you restore everything that was taken. And I rebuke that, that spirit of COVID, that spirit of destruction. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to test it afterwards for me, okay? Because I saw the vision and I saw you testing it afterwards. Okay, so I want you to test that afterwards. Um, there's someone else in this, in this section. I saw like, it's a, I believe it's a man. I saw like heart problems. It's either like a palpitation or something, but I saw like someone with a heart problem someone's heart is that you I want you to respond to that I believe it's a man let's see if it is anyone here struggling with your heart maybe it's medication or you get palpitations I just see that light around the back again previous time I was here I saw it as well there's a light right there at the back because I know there's there's someone right there at the back that needs healing in their body someone there at the back to the right that needs healing in their body I don't know who you are I can't see exactly but I see something going on there and I want you to respond if that is you if you need healing in your body see someone there at the back just want you to stand up and I just want to pray for you once again, you don't have to tell me. Is, it, is, that, is that two? Are you standing? Okay. Okay. I'm seeing something for one of you. It's like the Lord is restoring. I see chemicals in your blood. It's like the, the, the hormone levels in your blood the Lord is restoring to one of you. I don't know who it is, but I see the Lord touching because I see your blood and I see the Lord touching that. I see the Lord touching that. So, Father, I pray for complete healing, Father, over every single one of them, Lord. Complete healing right now in the name of Jesus. Father, that you would touch them. 
Touch them right now. Clear their blood, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Clear their blood. Thank you, Lord. Heal every pain, every pain, every ache. In the name of Jesus, complete healing right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So I felt I felt an impression, I believe it was yesterday already, kind of forgot about it, but I'll test it out anyway. I saw a lady with, it's like your ankles are giving you problems, pain in your ankles. Is that you? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone else? Okay. What is it? Is it like arthritis or something? Okay, you don't know what it is. The swelling. Is it painful? Right now even. Okay. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you touch your ankles right now. In the name of Jesus, complete healing. In the name of Jesus, complete healing. All swelling, we command you to go down. All inflammation to be gone in the name of Jesus. All pain. Leave her right now in the name of Jesus. Father, also her elbow, the whole arm, I pray that you touch it right now. Complete healing, Father, in the name of Jesus. All inflammation be gone right now. All pain come out of her body right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, just sit. You can just sit. That's the anointing. It's touching. The Lord is touching you right now. He's healing you right now. So, Father, I pray more. I pray that the fire of God fill her right now. Heal her completely in the name of Jesus. Fill her completely all the way. Yep. Fill her more. More. Heal her. Heal her completely, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Heal her. Yep. Heal her completely. Heal her in the name of Jesus. Complete healing right now. Complete healing right now. Every single spirit attached, causing the pain in her body, causing discomfort right now. Come, leave her all the way. Every single spirit attached, every wicked spirit. Leave her now in the name of Jesus. Fill her. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There you are. There you are. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just see like a waterfall coming over you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Yep. There you are. More Holy Spirit. <laughs> there we go. Just receive. Drink. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 Set her free from any disappointment of the past. Yeah, heal her. Heal her heart. Fill her. Fill her more. More. The Lord's working in you. Just receive because the Lord's touching you right now. I saw that. I saw the waterfall come over you. It was the Holy Spirit just drenching you. There it is. There it is. Father, I pray that you restore her joy as well. Just give her that fresh impartation of joy in her life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I can't shake this, but you've got a teacher's anointing upon you. You've got a teacher's anointing upon you. And I see music coming out of you. I see music just coming out of you. That means something to you. I just see it coming. It's flooding out of you. Are you musical at all? Or is it just, I just see, I just see music. Coming out of you. Okay. Okay, you love teaching and working with students. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay. 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 
right? So I always want to be respectful of people's time. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to ask people to come forward that need healing in their body. And if you need to be somewhere, I completely understand. I won't be offended. I'm going to pray for us. And if you need healing in your body, I want you to come afterwards and I'll pray for you. Okay. So Father, thank you for today. Thank you for blessing us, Lord, with your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your healing anointing, your healing grace, Father, in this place. Father, I pray that you will seal the word. Seal the word, Father, that that fell today. Seal those seeds, Father, and let it grow, Father, into full-grown, mature trees, Lord. Bless them, Lord Jesus. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So if you need healing in your body, come forward. We're going to pray for you. We're going to ask some of the leaders to come as well. We'll pray for you. And um, lastly, the reason why to some people that are new with this, the words of knowledge of calling people out with certain sicknesses or ailments or where they're sitting is so you can build your faith just because you weren't called out by name it doesn't mean that the lord doesn't want to heal you okay it's just so you can build your faith to see what the lord is doing to receive your own healing to receive it by faith okay and i'm also going to leave this space if there's anyone struggling with like religion where all this is a bit new for you you might feel uncomfortable with what's going on you know it's God but you're not quite sure exactly what it is I want to pray for you specifically as well okay because the spirit of religion is not from the Lord it's not from the Lord so I just felt the need to say that if you want prayer for that specifically I'm going to pray for you on the right hand side all right thank you everyone